Hello, my Hoyalings, which doesn't sound as good as I thought it would. You know, combining Hoya and Darlings. No, don't do that. I often get asked how to get a Hoya to bloom, why my Hoya won't bloom, or simply comments saying that you had some certain Hoya for X amount of years and it never bloomed for you. And what is wrong with that plant? And to be quite honest with you, I do feel there has been a great disservice done to us, the Hoya people, where some of the Hoyas that are the most popular are not necessarily the easiest to bloom. And I'm talking about those beginner Hoyas like Hoya Carnosa, Hoya Pubicalix, which should not be called Hoya Pubicalix. Hoya Bella. Now that one isn't difficult to bloom, but you know, it is also a spider mite magnet, so what is up with that? Of course, there are some other Hoyas that are pinned as beginner Hoyas like Hoya Obovata and Hoya Keri, and those are not too difficult to bloom, but they will also not bloom very early on. Therefore, I decided to make a list of 10 Hoyas that you can get to bloom under 10 months, and all of these Hoyas are easy to care for, relatively easy to find, depending of course where you are, and the most importantly, easy to bloom. Because honestly, I feel if you are going to get into Hoyas, the easiest way to dissuade you is to get a Hoya like Hoya Carnosa and not have it bloom for four or five years. And really, that, that's not the way to go. The best way to get hooked to a Hoya is to get a Hoya, get it bloom within like four to five months, and maybe that's not the best way actually, because then you will definitely be having hundreds of them. Before I continue, I want to say a thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I am a very stubborn person and I don't often like to ask for help. If I need something done, I want to do it myself and it doesn't matter if I know how to do it or not. If I don't know how to do it, I like to learn how to do it. And that is what drew me to Skillshare. There are thousands of courses on Skillshare with amazing people that will help you acquire new skills. A course I found very helpful this month is Pattern Camp Level 1, Design a Repeating Pattern in Adobe Illustrator by Jessica Swift. Now, I always wanted to create my own background for Patreon shoutout, and yeah, I kind of did that, but I was not very happy with the result and the way it looked. And this course helped me to create my own pattern, something that I like, but also it helped me learn how I can create many other different patterns, so whenever I get bored of the way my background looks, I can easily create a new one. You will see very soon the background that I created, and I hope that you love it as much as I do. Another amazing thing about Skillshare is that it doesn't really matter if you are a pro or a beginner, whatever you are interested in, you will be able to find the right level for you. There really isn't a good reason not to try out Skillshare, and since they are the sponsor of this video, they kindly offer to the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description a one-month free trial. In that way, you can learn something new that interests you. Now it's time to go back to the video. Some of the Hoyas on this list will bloom sooner than others. Some of them you can get to bloom literally right after rooting the cutting. Some of them will take closer to those 10 months, but it is still under 10 months. I did not organize them in any particular order, but you will see some great flower photos for each of them, except for one. I, for whatever reason, did not take good photos of that one Hoya. We will get to that. And I also just want to tell you, take this list with a grain of salt. I did check with other sources and all of the Hoyas on this list, I was able to see that they also bloomed under 10 months for other people. But, you know, there is always something that can happen. You know, you can get a cutting and place it in a dark spot and then say, Oh, Miro told me this will bloom in 10 months. Well, I didn't tell you to put it in a dark spot. So, you know, you need to provide the light and the watering and, you know, some basic conditions. But none of them are too demanding. They are pretty much easy going, and I think with that I have said everything. One more thing before we continue, and I know at this point you are probably asking, Miro, when will we get to see the plants? And that's a fair question. Fair question indeed. For the most of these, I did make a video. I will link it somewhere above in the cards or however this thing works, so you can watch the video about that plant, giving you a bit of insight in how to care for it, because I will not be covering that today, or at least that's not the plan, but plans change. So what are 10 Hoyas that bloom under 10 months, you ask? Literally no one asked, but that's fine. The first Hoya on this list is Hoya Microstemma. And 
you have seen my Hoya Microstemma. Since you saw it, it did produce several new peduncles, so we do expect many more blooms to come. I have really no idea why I'm talking like this, but you can see it's a wonderful small leaved Hoya and it grew actually quite big as well. I got this plant from a friend Carolina from Sweden in May of 2021 and it recently bloomed with lovely white flowers that smell like vanilla. So there is absolutely nothing not to like about this Hoya. And if you are not a person who likes small leaved Hoya, you really need to just get a bunch of them and you will see how just grateful those plants are. They are not demanding in any way. They don't take up a lot of space. They just grow, they do their own thing. They're very cute and most of them bloom quite early on. So that is the first plant for this list. The second plant on this list is one of my absolute favorites. I know it may not be for everyone. We discussed that in the video that I made about this Hoya, but I adore it because it will bloom for you as soon as you root it. And I really think, I, I don't understand why don't people start with this Hoya? Why do you start with Carnosa? No, start with this one instead. And that is Hoya Lucky. As you can see, I actually repotted this plant when I told you just points for me and it does have peduncles you can see here uh, actually two peduncles and I'm not really sure I didn't count how many flower buds there are some of them grew actually bigger which interesting you do you I guess it is a bit tricky to root they say the best way is to root it directly in substrate and I did make a mistake by not putting it in a propagation box I basically just put it in a potting mix and I tried to root it in just regular room environments. I do think it's better if you do put it in a prop box. Nevertheless, it did end up rooting for me and it actually grew more than I realized. The flowers are also lovely. They are white and they smell like chocolate. Another great thing about Hoya Loki is that flowers last for a very long time. The first time it bloomed, the flower lasted for about two weeks, but I did hear that they can last even longer. Now, when it reblooms and it reblooms quite often, I don't even count anymore. To me, it seems that it's always either in bloom or it has buds that are about to open. So really a fantastic Hoya if you are starting out with Hoyas. It is a bit different than the other ones. I do acknowledge that, you know, it has this shrub-like appearance to it. But honestly, it doesn't bother me as much. There are some other Hoyas that do have that shrub-like appearance and I don't like as much, but Hoya Loki, because it blooms so early on and because they do smell like chocolate, I forgive it. I forgive it all. I was gonna say for the next Hoya that it is wonderful that we have actually one of them that is in bloom, <laughs> but then... <laughs> Ah, then the flowers fell off uh, because it was in, in bloom for a long time and you know it is time for them to go worry not we do have some other flowers and this is Hoya multiflora this is the outer variegated one and you can see how lovely that plant is I do have another one and I will show you that in a moment now it only has four flowers here and that is basically me underwatering this plant. Both Hoya multiflora and Hoya Loki will want more water. So, you know, don't treat it like Hoya carnosa. Abandon the taco test, because if you do let it dry out all the time, you are basically never going to see it in bloom. The second Hoya multiflora that I have is Hoya multiflora SV406. Now this one is my favorite. Honestly, among all the multifloras, it is my favorite. It has darker green leaf. You can just see the difference there, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't drop them. It, it's even darker than Hoya Loki here when I compare those two. I absolutely love it. It just has this very healthy dark green color to the leaf. Let me just show you up close. It does get some splash, but you will not be getting this plant because it has gorgeous leaves. I do find them attractive. I don't think they're ugly by any stretch of imagination, but 
This plant makes lovely flowers that have orange color to them. The Corolla has orange on the tails. <laughs> this is a shooting star Hoya, so the ends of the Corolla will be a bit orangey on this one. You can see on the outer variegated Hoya multiflora, they are kinda greenish, yellowish. I think it's more lime green than anything else, but with SV406, they get orangey and they look absolutely lovely. That is one single reason why I got this plant and it was my first Hoya Multiflora. And well, now I'm just gonna say I'm hooked on Hoya Multiflora. Both of these Multifloras will also bloom for you pretty soon after you root them. They are not as fast as Loki, but they don't take more than perhaps four months to get to bloom. And you can probably get them to bloom in even less if you don't forget to water them. If there is one takeaway from this video, please do water your Loki and Multiflora. This next Hoya, I do feel quite dumb for not taking good photos when it bloomed. I wanted to make a video on it and I was focused on researching the plant and I just thought there would be more days for me to take photos. Turns out, nope, but that's fine. You will see a couple of photos that I took. They are quite bad, I do apologize. But trust me, this is a lovely Hoya and also it blooms very early on. This is Hoya Kanya Kumariana. Another small-leaved Hoya, I know, I know. You can actually see it does have a peduncle here with buds if I managed to just use my hands like a human person. It's not gonna happen. Okay, we finally managed, so... Or not. <laughs> you can see the buds there. It does have several peduncles and this Hoya really doesn't require much. It doesn't want any special light. It is a very tolerant Hoya and it does have lovely leaves. It is often confused with Hoya endowensis, but to me, you know, when you see them side by side, they look nothing alike. This one is more velvety. The texture of the leaf will remind you more of Hoya caudata, not the shape, just the texture. With Hoya endowensis, that plant is more glabrous compared to this one, or completely glabrous compared to this one. But I really adore Hoya Kanya Kumariana. I just love those leaves. I cannot wait for it to become bushy. I do have two cuttings here. My friend Carolina was kind enough to send me two cuttings of this plant, and I also got it in May of 2021. And it just grew so well. I am just now realizing that it has quite a few peduncles that I did not know about, so that will be very interesting to see more of them in bloom. And yeah, uh, I, I adore it. I adore it. I think it's absolutely cute. This next Hoya I also made a video about and it is one of my favorites. I keep saying that for every Hoya. Just get used to it. For every Hoya I will say it's one of my favorites. They are all one of my favorites. This is Hoya Patricia. And this Hoya used to be on a trellis and I was repotting the plant, so I took it off from the trellis. While I was finishing my repotting, I placed it on the side of my millsbow and it was in bloom then, and it just looked so gorgeous, just hanging on the side of my cabinet with open flower buds. So I decided to just leave it like this. I do think I will have to manage it somehow. I think it will not stay on the side of my cabinet. I think maybe I will try it in a hanging planter so I can attach some of these vines. Uh, well, not like this. This is just a concept of how that will look. It is covered with peduncles. It will bloom soon. It will also bloom very early on. I think in less than six months you can get it to bloom. And honestly, this one is covered with peduncles. It seems to me there are at least six or seven. I think they will all open at the same time because they are pretty much at the same stage as well. And if that happens, you, you can just be sure that I will be either making a video or showing it to you in the video. But yeah, it's just a lovely Hoya. Very, very easy to grow. Very beautiful to see in bloom. The leaves are also very nice in this plant. They do kind of remind you of Hoya elliptica because this is a cross with Hoya elliptica and Hoya darwini. They are maybe not uh, the selling point of this plant. Th those would definitely be the flowers, but 
yeah, just a lovely horror to have. And it is so lovely that I have one mealy bug on it. Oh, you woolly bastard. Get away from my plant. This one is so adorable. It is Hoya Minutiflora. This is Hoya with the smallest flower. So, you know, it will not be a showy plant, but it is very interesting. Once you see the flowers in person, you will totally be sold on this plant. When you look at the photos, you're like, oh, but they're so tiny, you don't really see them. But trust me, when you see them in person, when you see it bloom, you will love it. And I don't think it's too expensive. I don't really know. At least when I got it, it wasn't too expensive. And if you remember my video that I made on this plant, it was a one cutting that was longer. And I just cut it into several pieces to make a fuller pot. And I think it looks so cute. The small leaves are absolutely adorable. Very, very easy to root, actually. When I got it, I did have an issue rooting the plant because the internodal space was very tight, so I had to lay it flat, but I didn't keep the medium wet enough or moist enough. But this time, because I had longer internodal spaces, I was actually able to put parts of the stem in the potting mix and Honestly, it had no issue rooting, as you can see. I didn't do anything special. I just chopped them, put them in the pot, and that was it. I do have two or three peduncles in this plant right now, so I hope to see it in bloom very soon. And it also grows very fast. It doesn't require any particular light. It is a very undemanding Hoya, and well, we, we, we love low maintenance. Hoyas, don't we? So if you're not quite sure whether you should get this plant or not, I strongly suggest that if you can, you get it. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. Which I probably say for every Hoya. But trust me. <laughs> the next Hoya on this list is Hoya flagellata. And I did make a video on Hoya flagellata so you could see it in bloom. It also has peduncles now. And all of these Hoyas that I'm mentioning today are Hoyas that, you know, they will bloom early on and they will rebloom quite often. So that's great. One more point for them. This one did take closer to 10 months, but what, you know, once it started to bloom, no issues. I, you know, it blooms every couple of months then provided the conditions are right. I don't think it likes to be too hot, so it may not bloom as much during the summer, but spring and fall and all throughout winter, yeah, it, it will bloom non-stop. The leaves are also very nice. They are very similar to Hoya caudata. I'm not sure if you can see. And I do find this plant to be easier than Hoya caudata. There is one gorgeous leaf on this plant that I absolutely have to show. I have like a lot to bloom for me as quite a small cutting. I did not receive it with a peduncle. It just decided it wants to show its beauty to me. And an interesting thing about Hoya flagellata is that the flowers open at night. So you might need to wait to see them. They will not open when you are asleep, don't worry. They will open around 7 p.m. You know, just when the sun starts to set, they will start to open. So you will not miss them out. Don't worry, you won't have to stay <laughs> awake until, you know, 2 a.m. in the dark and then quickly turn on the lights to see it. No, that is not what is going to happen. Compared to Hoya Caudata, this one for me is much easier. I actually do have Hoya Caudata that didn't bloom for me yet and I've had it for two years and it's quite a sizable plant. Hold on for one second. This is my Hoya Caudata with big green leaves and <laughs> what? Do I need to trellis this part? Perhaps, perhaps. It was stuck on another plant, on another trellis. And this one, this vine is going all the way into my window, which is lovely. This plant actually did not travel all that well to me. It lost all the leaves and it grew from a bare stem with no leaves. But as you can see, it's doing more than fine now. I actually don't know what I was thinking why I didn't retrellis this part. It has wonderful leaves. I'm going to show you, of course. It's a gorgeous big leaf there. And the new leaves, when they come in, they are absolutely cute. They get dark. And, you know, I cannot fault Hoya caudata for being a beautiful Hoya with foliage, but I don't know why it doesn't want to bloom. 
it grows well and you know in the beginning i was like okay yeah she went through a bit of stress <laughs> you know losing all the leaves and all that but it really should have bloomed by now in my opinion so we'll see how it goes it has a great root system which is actually stuck to the bottom and it does need watering so more tasks for me i guess this next shoya i love for several different reasons despite this being the plant why i had root mealybugs if you remember i did make that video how to release hoyas from coconut coir or sorry coconut husk and that's when i discovered that this plant had plethora of root mealybugs so i decided to cut it chop it into several cuttings the other cuttings that were closer to the top i did sell so i can get obviously more hoyas uh, but yeah, you can see this one is actually about to open the flowers and I'm so sad that it's not open right now, but it's a wonderful Hoya, very easy to bloom. It does make a lot of nectar, but another thing about this plant that I absolutely love is the leaves. They are closest to peperomias that you will get with Hoyas and <laughs> compared to peperomias this one is no fuss plant it blooms pretty much right after you root it this one has actually three peduncles which i didn't realize until now good job so it does bloom very frequently i do have other one this other one that i have is outer variegated one and this one i got in when did i get it in november of this or the last year, Miro, we're in the 2022. You can see it made a new leaf. It actually uh, was a bigger cutting. I recently cut it in half because I was sharing it with my friend. So that's why it's smaller than it initially was. My job was to root it, to get it to grow, which I did. I cut it into two cuttings and I am left with the base and my friend got the top of this plant, but yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous. A little bit different than the green version because this one is not so pubescent. I have to say that I do prefer this one much more. The leaves are wonderful. It's not just pubescent like Hoya Thomsoni. It's really a very special texture to the leaf and I do recommend you get it. I don't think it's hard to get. I don't think it's expensive. There is inner variegated Hoya subquinto planervis, and that one is quite rare, quite expensive, quite not in my collection. You will also most likely find this Hoya under the name Hoya pachiclada, but it's not. The correct name for this plant is Hoya subquinto planervis. And you can actually see here on this leaf the leftover of my root mealybug treatment, which totally didn't work best to cut the roots for my experience. That's all about Hoya subquinto planervis. Lovely Hoya to have, as I will say for most of the Hoyas, and easy Hoya to bloom. I'm not sure about the outer variegated one, but the green version, all of the cuttings that I had from that plant, from the green version, they started to produce peduncles very early after I rooted them. So it is truly an easy plant to get to bloom. This next Hoya, I honestly did not expect to be in bloom for the video because it's been in bloom for over, I would say for over a week. It is Hoya Burmanica. This is one of my most favorite Hoyas at the moment. I absolutely love that leaf. It is gorgeous. I don't know why, it reminds me like angel wing begonias. I think this is, this is the angel wing begonia in the Hoya world. The underside of the leaf will get a bit purpley. Not all of them, but some of them will get a bit purpley. And you can see it is in bloom right now. Once again, the hands are really a problem here, aren't they? I absolutely have no idea if that is in focus or not, but I will attach photos for you. And there are three more peduncles. This plant will make peduncles on every node. I got this plant as a small cutting in October of 2021, and it is absolutely loving the life, and I absolutely love this Hoya. Even this new tiny growth here is producing a peduncle. Honestly, if you can get Hoya Burmanica, do get it. 
There is a Hoya that is sold under the name Hoya Species Vietnam from Polynero Complex, which is not a good name for the plant. And that one seems to be similar, if not identical, to Hoya Burmanica. It could be just Hoya Burmanica from Vietnam. I did make a video on Hoya Burmanica, which I have not yet edited. I will try to do that as quickly as possible so you can see what I have discovered about this plant. But really, it is just like a better version of Hoya Polinera, in my opinion, because Hoya Polinera will never bloom here, ever. And the last Hoya for today is Hoya Ilagiorum. And this plant doesn't look the best, it has definitely seen better days, but <laughs> it has also seen both root mealybugs and regular mealybugs. 2021 was the year of mealybug here, clearly. And it's just, you know, recovering now, but it did bloom very early on. Unfortunately, it did lose that peduncle because it, it was just, it had too many mealybugs and I had to be quite aggressive with alcohol treatment, but I'm not too worried. I know this plant will rebloom because it bloomed in, I would say, three or four months from getting it as a small cutting and it grows really fast. It has slowed the growth now because I also recently repotted the plant and I can see that it's taking to the new mix quite well. I am keeping it now in a spot that I think it's a bit too cold for this plant. It is underneath my anthuriums. There is a LED light there, but I think because it's so close to the floor, it's just a bit too cold for this plant to continue to grow because it is from Philippines, if I'm not mistaken. And I also did attempt to make a video on this plant and I have no idea why I never edited that. So. Maybe when it recovers and it looks a bit better, I will make the video once again. I will probably trim some of the dry vines and move it into my grow tent because I see now that it does not have any mealybugs. It has been mealybug free for quite some time now. So, you know, now it's just about getting the plant to grow again. But it is a very easy hoa to grow and very easy hoa to bloom. There are a couple of color versions that I know of. This is the red one and it's just beautiful when you see it. I will show you the photos so you can see how it looks like. I will be getting the yellow one. That is a small um, secret. I have potentially unofficially made an order of the new Hoyas that I want to get. I will also make a Hoya wish list video soon because there are Hoyas that I tried to get but I couldn't and you know my order still hasn't been shipped and I don't think it will be because it's still too cold. But yeah, I have no idea where I wanted to lead with that. What I am trying to say is that I did order or I will order the yellow Hoya Ilagiorum and I hope it blooms as early as this one, the red one. And it would be actually lovely to see both of them in bloom side by side. So yeah, that is about Hoya Ilagiorum. It is very easy Hoya to grow, very inexpensive Hoya, at least in Europe, in the places where I have been able to find it. So I definitely think you should get it. And the red version, the red color doesn't show as well on the camera. It is just a much nicer red when you see it in person, so you know, D don't trust the photos, get the plant, is my recommendation. All right, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing these Hoyas that are easy to flower and that are easy to grow. I do think you should get some of them. Please tell me which of these you think is the most interesting for you. Which one do you find the most beautiful? Which ones do you have? I'm sure because these are not very rare Hoyas. I'm sure you probably even have most of these. And I don't think there are any new ones that you never heard about on this list. Also, tell me if you think there is a Hoya that should be on this list that I missed, and I probably did. There are some Hoyas that were just so close to 10 months, like Hoya Lobby. Very, very close. That one is an excellent bloomer. And there are other ones that are also not difficult to bloom, but they take slightly over one year. I'm just hitting this philodendron. I do apologize. Do you spark joy? I like how there is always a clear indication that I should end the video and usually that is the accent change. Make sure to comment down below and let me know which of these is your favorite and if you have any other suggestions that you think should be on this list. And do not tell me 
that you got Hoya Carnosa to bloom early on, you probably got a plant that had a peduncle or a peduncle was forming or something like that because I know for a fact from extensive research slash reading on the internet and reading the experience of other people that it takes on average about three to four years, maybe even more, to get Carnosa to bloom. So I will not be having any of that in the comment section. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, this is the best opportunity to do that. Actually, the best opportunity was probably the beginning of this video, but I think someone forgot to mention that, so make sure to subscribe now. Turn on the notification bell. We all like bells ringing, ex except when they're very loud and then we don't and notifications are quite annoying, but turn on the notification bell because then you will know when I post a new video and who doesn't want to know that? I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you very soon in the next video. Goodbye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Aurelise, Betz Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle, Farah, Housebund, Heather, Hoya, Heather, Kelso, Kristen, Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif, Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nicole and Caleb of Schlieff Tropicals, PJ, Plants by Misha, Rachel, Colette, Conroy, Robin L, Jennings, Stephanie, H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJ, W.O., Vicky Dingler, Wojtetaka, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokop Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Farman, Brana Phillips, Catherine G. Cologne, Claudia L., David Candia, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Nikki Plantolenia, Ringlove, Ruby, and Sheila Mason Casper. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Erin Keenan, Lauren M., Marissa Summerfield, Ran Lambert, and Tang Watanas Cool. Thank you so much for incredible support, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I would love to know what was the first Hoya that you got to bloom, because I think for me it was Hoya Rangsan, so that is interesting to know. I hope you're all well and I will see you soon. Goodbye!